Uh, we have with us <laughs> Senator Patricia Rucker, who joins us via telephone from another location, as they say. Patricia, good morning to you. Good morning. Sorry to not be there in person. And um, good morning to Matt and John also. Good morning, Senator. This is a, a Jefferson County uh, crew we've got uh, working on the show here today, right? Well, except Patricia represents both counties, yes, so yeah, that counts. That counts. Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> Patricia, the start date for the work on uh, Route 340 through Harper's Ferry is September 12. Correct. That is correct. Is, is that is that the absolute first day when they shut the road down? Yes. So that would be the first day that the road is shut down. Um, you will notice that they've already started the preliminary work, putting up signs, um, putting up notifications. If you're driving anywhere along the route uh, of the detour or of, um, you know, 340, there, there's been work done by DOH in preparation. But the first day that it is absolutely going to be shut down is on September 12th. Colin has the graphic ready to go. You can slide that across if uh, you got the uh, the mouse there, Colin. So you get a, a, an eyeballs look uh, from the sky as to what section of Harper's Ferry and 340 will no longer be available to the public. Can you describe it as the as we? You don't see the graphic just yet, probably, Patricia. But can you describe the road and the, exactly what the shutdown is? So the shutdown is going to be essentially from the Exxon gas station uh, in Virginia on 340 all the way up to um, and past where Chestnut Hill Road comes off of 340. And the reason for the closure of 340 at that area and part of Chestnut Hill Road is also going to be closed is because they're going to be stabilizing that cliff face where we experience rockfall basically all the time, constantly, but especially whenever there's any weather changes, major boulders are falling um, from that cliff face. And obviously, because of the danger of working on that cliff face and these huge boulders that are unstable, they cannot take the risk of any vehicular traffic going through there while they're working. And so that's the reason for why the closure is a complete closure. You know, we did ask them, can it just have one lane open? But it's just too unsafe. There is a detour that people will be sent on. Colin has that graphic, too, if you want to slide it across. Colin, can you describe the detour and the amount of time involved with this detour? So for the folks in Harper's Ferry who want to get over the mountain um, and into Virginia and Maryland, instead of taking 340, they're being encouraged to think about going through uh, Shepherdstown and Charlesburg or... Um, the other major detour is taking Route 9 into Loudoun County. So this would require them taking 340 and then getting on Route 9, um, I guess, east um, into Virginia. Or there's also the 340 going into Berryville if you want to go, you know, depending on where your, you know, your destination is. But the Route 9 detour is the one that's causing the most concern because you're taking folks into uh, basically what is going to be a two-lane small road. Uh, once you cross into Virginia, you have uh, a turn that you can make on Harper's Ferry Road that would then take you back to 340 right at that Exxon gas station, and you continue on to Frederick or wherever your destination would be. But that two-lane road, just a few uh, days ago, there was a tree that came down near Sago Road, and it closed Route 9 completely because, again, it's just this very small country curvy road, and it already has um, a lot of traffic on it, a lot of commuters taking that road. People are concerned how uh, long the delays will be if you add all of the 340 traffic is now going to be going being added to it and they're estimating it's a 35 minute additional time to go around but i think that that's a very optimistic yeah i, I agree with you senator that 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 for that's very optimistic and incidentally on on the graph as people see it it is virginia route 671 uh, which is also called Pleasant Valley Road, and it goes through, a, 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 I think, an unincorporated town called Nearsville, 
N E E R S V I W L E. And so that's the road. Yeah, I used to take it years ago uh, when I was going to Dulles Airport from Shepherdstown uh, until they opened the four lane Route 9 uh, from uh, Charlestown to the top of the Blue Ridge. And now now I go that way when I'm going to Dulles Airport. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a pleasant road. Uh, it has a nice name, a proper name, Pleasant Valley Road. But, but you're right, <laughs> Senator. It's just, it, uh, the traffic is just going to be awful. What is important for me, I, I think, is that folks understand that um, we're all going to have to be patient. I think one of the biggest fears I have is as, you know, people just get annoyed because it's taking too long to make those turns and, you know, it's going to be stop and go for the majority of that time on Route 9. Uh, once they get to that, you know, when we leave West Virginia into Virginia, and I'm just worried folks will, you know, do things that are not a good idea um trying to take little little small routes around or um speed up as soon as they get an opening and those roads are all curvy there's you know they go up and down if you're going too fast you're not going to see if there's a car stopped uh, on the other side of that curve and you know accidents that happen there's almost no space um on either side of the road to be able to go around an accident for vehicles to get off the road and for emergency vehicles to get there and this is a very rural part for both virginia and west virginia we already have um just volunteer services uh emergency services up there on the mountain and if there are accidents that makes it worse for everyone and again very limited choices to be able to get around any obstruction matt harvey the repairs that they're doing, um, I, I know you've spoke about this previously on this show. Are, are they doing fencing or are they doing some blasting? Do you do you know? So my understanding is there there will be some. Um, they they use the word shearing of the rock face and clearing of debris and and obviously the parts that are loose um, will probably be coming down. But then they're going to be putting these huge metal fencing um, with, they told me, these huge stakes right into the rock wall so that any future falling rocks and debris would hit the metal fence and fall down straight um, by the, by the, I guess, the rock. I don't know what else to say. Um, instead of going into the road, instead of hitting vehicles. So... Yes, there's going to be this um, chain link fence that's hopefully going to, you know, keep um, people safe. But it is going to take a lot of work to clean and clear. They're going to cut some um, trees and limbs that are dead, um, you know. And, and again, I can't even imagine um, really the, the amount of work that's going to be. And they're estimating three months for this project. Um, and there are incentives to the company to get this done in three months but obviously if there's any bad weather that's going to slow things down and that's very likely to happen well senator the the it's my understanding and maybe i misread it i thought about a couple of weeks ago there was an announcement that it was going to be 100 days not 90 days is that correct did you see that is that was that just a mistake so, or what no so yeah some people were talking about um you know that when they put in the amount of time on the signs for them to be out there on the road, they did put it in for 100 days. But as of right now, the construction company said their plan is to be done in 90 days. Okay. All right. Thank you. It, was there no any problem. concerns from Harper's Ferry residents or Bolivar residents that would impact the view shed? No, I never heard any of those concerns. I mean, this metal you know, fencing that's going to be put on the rock face is not really visible from the, you know, that little peninsula we have of Harper's Ferry. It's really already, you know, pretty much hidden by the trees that are growing um, by the river. So I don't think it's going to affect the view shed at all. Yeah, the Park Service would have objected to that. Yeah. Well, I would hope that even the Park Service does consider safety a, a priority for the oh. people who want to come to see Harper's Ferry. Have you heard any concerns from the folks uh, at the Hilltop House in regards to any construction delays that this might cause? 
No, there has been no mention of that. But I, I will tell you that major tra- tractor trailers, super big trucks are not going to be able to take that detour that I just described on Route 9. So the Department of Highways, both in Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia have notified all the major trucking companies and construction crews and letting them know any vehicle of certain size must take 340 through Berryville or must come um, from 81 instead of coming through these small roads. How well do you think that word has gotten out? So that's the million-dollar question right there. Um, I will tell you that Even though there has been articles in the papers and social media posts and public meetings and posted, you know, signs, um, there are still folks who were surprised when they saw the, you know, the flashing announcements on the road saying that the road's going to be closed. And I know that that's not a good sign, um, especially when you have new uh, traffic, uh, you know, directions that you're trying to give uh, folks the more time they have to get used to it and to look into it and to understand they're going to have to leave earlier, they're going to arrive home later, it's going to make things um, a lot better. So knowing that, uh, Delegate Reidenauer, myself, and Commissioner Tricia Jackson have uh, worked together to try to organize another public meeting, and it's going to be this Saturday on the mountain at Blue Ridge Elementary School. And we've been announcing it everywhere. Um, we reached out to all the newspapers um, and just to try to get folks another opportunity to get their questions asked, to go over the route and the new traffic directions and, and just see if we can alleviate some of the concerns that they may have. Um, we're hoping to have representatives from the Department of Highways there. We are going to have elected officials, and we're going to have some of the traffic engineers. Senator Rocker, when you were on with us a couple of weeks ago discussing this shutdown, which is now just five days away next Tuesday here, you had mentioned some concerns, and you alluded to those earlier in our conversation today, but you didn't get into specifics again, and maybe you could, like you did uh, a couple of weeks ago, about some of the problem areas with this reroute and that they aren't used to handling a lot of traffic, and there are some areas where some speeding with people trying to get out into traffic could result in death. Yes, I'm very concerned about the folks on Chestnut Hill Road and Route 115, which intersects with Route 9. So for most folks in Jefferson County, Route 9 is just a quick, great, straight way to get into um, Loudoun County, heading towards Leesburg. Um, And they just drive straight and no problems. But for those of us who live on the mountain, um, making that turn on Route 9 to either head into West Virginia, into Charlestown and Harpers Ferry, or going the same direction as the commuters um, east into Loudoun County, it's it's already right now kind of a nerve-wracking turn if you have to make a left. Because there is a little hill right above that area where Chestnut Hill Road and 115 intersect. And if folks are coming from Virginia and are not following the speed suggestion and going faster than they should, they're not going to see that there's a car turning in front of them. So there's already been some accidents there now, even before this added traffic. In addition to that, the folks on, um, you know, who need to get onto Route 9, and again, it doesn't matter which direction, they get impatient having to wait and wait and wait and wait for an opening. And so there, there's the tendency to try to, you know, throw themselves in when they really do not have enough time. And again, that's just an invitation for a major accident to happen. And what worries me on top of that very major concern is the fact that, again, we have only a volunteer firefighting companies up there on the mountain there's no permanent staffing and uh and we're kind of a little bit far from you know hospitals at that section um and if there is a major accident and you have a lot of traffic your emergency vehicles are going to have difficulty even getting to you so all of those things are 
are what really, really concern me. And I've been raising these concerns. When I first started raising them with um, Department of Highways, I don't think they really recognized that having the detour was going to exacerbate what was already a very serious safety issue. Now we are basically at that point where we are going to see, um, you know, what happens. And I'm really, really trying to educate the population and especially those folks on the mountain um, so that they are prepared. Um, one of the things that the Department of Highways is going to do is during the detour, there will only be right-hand turns allowed on Chestnut Hill Road and 115 onto Route um, 9, which means for those who, you know, want to go towards um, Northern Virginia, they're going to have to come from the 115 direction to make a right-hand turn. For those who want to go into Jefferson County into Charlestown and Harpers Ferry, they will have to drive to the Chestnut Hill side to make that right-hand turn. But again, that's a new traffic pattern, and if folks don't know and they drive up there and they realize, oh, I'm not allowed to make a left-hand turn anymore, there's not a great amount of space for them to do a U-turn. So for the first few weeks at least, um, we have requested that law enforcement be up there to help folks with the new traffic pattern yeah uh, senator the the 115 you're talking about it's interesting you know i grew up in charlestown my family moved to charlestown when i was four four and a half years old in 1946 the, it, you'd be amazed how many people like me that don't think of 115 as 115 it's the old route nine there are a number of people around who, who think about that so i just wanted to to mention that just to get it uh, in case any of those are listening this is what we're talking about right. the old route nine yeah. Uh, and uh, technically, that's called Charlestown um, Road. Um, but again, I have to, I have to somehow differentiate it um, that John from because it's all really one. No, road. no, no. It's you're you're road. absolutely right. I just wanted to make sure that we got that cleared up for people that that haven't been paying attention for the last thirty years, like it is sometimes the case with me uh, it, it, to these things. Also, uh, I remember. A, a, a big meeting in Charleston. This is a couple, three years ago when I was still in the legislature, and this was announced that you and I both tried to get to persuade them that maybe they could get by with only closing one lane, and uh, uh, and they they as I recall they were very adamant that that just simply couldn't be done. So yeah, uh, another thing I want to mention is this, and this is the classic case of poor planning. I think if. The expansion of 340 uh, from uh, from Ripon to the Virginia line in the direction of Berryville had been done several years ago and was now complete. That would have eased this situation considerably. Yes, I'm sure. It because would. it would it would attract more people to go to Berryville to get to say Dulles Airport than to uh, to use uh, West Virginia Route 9 to get there, particularly in a situation like this. Absolutely. And I will tell you, um, there have been uh, some who have, you know, requested the Department of Highways to have completed that work that they're doing on 115, the old Route 9, um, at the Bloomery Road intersection, before this detour began and they're still not yeah done. that's right and that certainly is not going to help either that's right senator rucker again your meeting saturday will take place where and at what time blue ridge elementary school starting at 10 a.m and it's going to be in the primary school cafeteria thank you so much for your time this morning and i appreciate the information Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on and, and helping to educate the folks. Um, again, I just ask everyone to be patient. We're all going to have to just, you know, be patient during this period of time. Thank you, Senator Rucker. Okay. Have a great day. You too.